Good. <laughs>Welcome to the 2015 Keen Mayoral Debate hosted by the Keen Liberty Alliance. I'm your host, Daryl W. Perry, co-founder of the Keen Liberty Alliance. Over the next hour, the three candidates for mayor, Kendall Lane, Rick Blood, and Chris Roberts, will answer questions from me and the viewing audience. If you're watching at home, you can call in with your questions to the number. It should be on the screen very shortly. Or you can submit questions via Twitter using hashtag KLA debate. We will, or before we begin, I just want to make sure I let you know, we've already had nearly a dozen questions submitted so far. I will try to get through as many as possible. So if you do call in with a question, there's no guarantee that we'll get to that question. We will begin with opening statements from the candidates. Each candidate will have two minutes to make an opening statement. Let's begin with you, Mayor Lane. Thank you, and uh, thank you for hosting this. This gives us an opportunity to, uh, to get together so that the voters ultimately can make the decision. There are a number of issues facing the city right now that, that we, need to, we need to be addressing. There are issues certainly relating to the taxes. There are also issues relating to the employment base. And there are issues relating to the heroin epidemic that we're facing within this community that is just devastating hundreds and hundreds of families right now in this region. Most recent numbers I saw were that the federal government is estimating that there are about 2,200 addicts in the city of Keene. That's almost 10% of the population. That's a huge number. It's a huge crisis. And it's something that, that as we go forward, it's going to be necessary for us to address. During the last recession, we discovered that many people who are, in fact, approaching retirement age, who are in their late 60s or even older, decided to leave the workforce. Keene, unfortunately, is in the center of, of that issue, that New Hampshire has the highest percentage of uh, seniors in the, in the country, and the Monadnock region has the highest percentage in New Hampshire. So that if we want to maintain our employment base, if we want our, the companies to stay here, if we want to maintain this community, we need to be attracting younger people, we need to be attracting 
people that, that can fill the vacancies that, that are existing in co companies right now. Right now, there are jobs that are going unfilled because there are no qualified people in this, in this region to, to fill those jobs. And companies are out rec actively recruiting to bring people in here. We need to make this a desirable community. Thank you, Mayor Lane. Mr. Blood. I agree with the mayor that we do need to make this a, a desirable community. Um, <coughs> I've got a pro uh, I agree with him that Keene has a problem with the heroin epidemic also. Um, that's, that's probably one of the biggest ones that, that we can't fight by ourselves. We can try and help the citizens of this community uh, if we had the, the proper funding. The fact is, is the state still isn't forking over a lot of money. The federal government, I believe, just issued some grants, uh, and some of that money came our way. Uh, I think the drug problem goes a lot deeper than just us. It's, it's nationwide, if not worldwide, uh, and heroin is the worst drug. Uh, I've heard, uh, we'll get into that later. Um, but as far as the community, well, I believe that as a community looking out after its citizens, we should give selflessly. I mean, even community members should, should give to the city. John F. Kennedy, what, you know, ask not what you can do, what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. It's basically the same thing. At this point, the city is going to need all the help that it can get to meet its demands of its citizens. Or you have to demand less. So if it, you can go, it's a choice, it's your choice. Send in a list of the things that you can do without and you know they may be able to be cut out of a budget. Or send things that you think that we can't do without and the budget goes up. The more things that the citizens want, the bigger the budget is, thus the need for greater taxes because you need some way to cover those costs. Thank you, uh, Mr. Blood. Councillor Roberts. <clears throat> yes, the, um, yes, I agree with the mayor and I agree with uh, Mr. Blood that there are a number of problems in King. But I differ in, I, f I feel that many of the problems have been preventable. As far as the drug problem, on the school board as far back as 2003, I said we had a drug problem. A couple of times, even a few years ago, I said on the King School, in the King City Council, we have a drug problem. That was a problem that could have been handled before it became a crisis. We talk about losing jobs. Smith just put its um, Production Avenue, 100,000 square feet, on the market. Smith is not having over is reduced overtime. Tinkin just laid off people. Some of those things are preventable. Yes, it's because of high taxes and high utility. Keene is a great city. Keene has problems. Keene did not suffer as many communities did in the Great Recession, but Keene has not recovered as many of the communities in New Hampshire have since the Great Recession is older. In 2013-2014, riots for the World Series and riots that happened on the campus or near the campus has really damaged the reputation of Keene and Keene State College. King State College has made three, four hundred people less, which is going to have a great economic impact on the city of Keene. Basically, Keene and King State College have to realize we have a problem. We have to get married. We have to get give and take. Keene and King State College will not survive unless it repairs its reputation. We've got to repair our reputation together. Second biggest problem after the drug is what's going to happen to the east side of Keene now there's going to be four or five hundred less houses open because they're not college students in them. Thank you, Councillor Roberts. For the remainder of the debate, you will have 45 seconds to answer the question unless otherwise specified. We will begin with you, Mr. Blood, with the following factually inaccurate question that was submitted by a city council <laughs> candidate. Uh, the, city council ca the city council candidate asked, the debate is being hosted by Free Keen. How do you feel about this? I feel that any debate is, is a good debate, no matter who it's 
it's sponsored by, and somebody actually made a remark to me that I wouldn't get involved with anything the Free State people do, or the Free Keen people do. Um, and I think a lot of people get those, those two terms confused. Um, I believe that I also was approached by the Republican committee to do a forum, and should I avoid that because it's the Republican committee and they're kind of a partisan group, I, I believe. Um, I believe that any, any debate is good and it opens up conversations, gets people to think, and it gets the citizens to understand more about what's going on in the city. Thank you, Mr. Blood. Councilor Roberts. Yes, I have no problem with debate. Matter of fact, I wish we had at least three debates. One inside the city, this one uh, does, does a perfect opportunity, and three, um, one at the college, because the college has to be part of the community. The third part is, we're talking about you not putting on a fair debate. If you don't put a fair debate on, none of us candidates suffer, you suffer. Mayor Lane. Thank you. I actually appreciate the fact that, that uh, the Free Keen has stepped forward to, to propose this debate. That uh, everybody out, uh, other organizations that in fact could have proposed a debate were very silent. And you stepped forward and we all agreed the, that uh, we, we would appear here. Uh, the fact that Free Keen is putting on this debate doesn't mean that the debate is somehow biased or that somehow, the, in, in fact, it's probably less biased than if some other organization did it because you have no horse in, in, in this race. Uh, that that I, I feel, you know, perfectly comfortable in, in, uh, in participating in, in this debate with you. Thank you very much. Uh, the next question, Councillor Roberts, you will answer first. Uh, the question actually came from several people. We've had several questions about the <coughs> opiate problem. Uh, one of the questions was submitted by a potential voter, the other by Joe Merzoff, who is a candidate for city council. The question is, who should pay for treatment of opiate addicts? Should it be the pharmaceutical companies in the medical community, or should it be taxpayers? <coughs> we can argue all we want, whether it should be the pharmaceutical or it should be um, the medical. But right now, the number one priority is treating people and then going after them later on. Mayor Lane? I, I totally agree with, with uh, Councilor Roberts that uh, the issue about who's going to pay is less important than the fact that we need to get treatment, we need to, we need to be able to get this, this problem managed, that it's, it's a serious crisis that this community is facing, it's a serious crisis within the state. I know that, the, that there are programs that the state has recently adopted. I've been working closely with, with uh, Jack Wozmack, who, who is in the governor's office as the state drug czar, uh, to try to develop some local solutions for treatment. And, and also, in addition to treatment, we need to provide support for recovering addicts that once the, they, they are, in fact, clean of, of heroin, they need continuing support in, in order to maintain that, that recovery. Thank you, Mary Lane. Rick Blood? These two gentlemen make a great point um, that, yeah, treatment is of first concern for the addicts. Uh, but we all know that unless the money's there, they won't get the treatment. Plain and simple. You need the money first before, any, before anybody will do anything. Uh, and yeah, I believe pharmaceutical companies should be, uh, should have huge f either fines or, or taxes put on them for substance abuse problems. I also believe that what we need is harsher, very super harsh penalties for heroin dealers. Thank you, Rick Blood. The next question, uh, Mayor Lane, you will answer first. This question was submitted by a city council candidate. What victimless crimes would you like to see no longer enforced by Keene Police? Uh, victimless crimes are, you know, that's, that's, that, that, that's, that's an interesting term because there is no such thing as a victimless crime, I don't believe. That uh, I would say, I would say though that, that uh, the use of drugs by an addict 
which technically is a crime, should not be something for which addicts are arrested and put in prison. It should be something for which people receive treatment. That, that I'm, I'm a strong advocate, that, that tr we've, we've been through a war on drugs. It was an abject failure. It did not achieve anything. I think the, that we now need to, need to be looking at how we provide treatment, how we, how we can provide support Thank you, for, Lane. for addicts. Rick Blood? <sighs> I've got a certain feeling on the whole law thing. Laws are great. You can make a thousand of them a day if you'd prefer. But the one thing that people seem to forget is that criminals don't pay attention to laws. Laws are only for law-abiding citizens. Um, and I don't think it's the number of laws. It's uh, if people worried more about their own being and what they were doing themselves the police would, you know, people would police themselves in a perfect world. Thank you. Councillor Roberts, 45 seconds to answer the question of what victimless crimes would you like to see no longer enforced by the Keene police? Yeah, I would go back to, we get a new police chief, Chief Coster, and he's putting more into com community policing. So when the police go around and they see something and they talk to somebody, they don't get in the legal system. So the quality of the police force and the community policing can prevent a lot of crimes or they go and say, you know what you're doing? I'm going to give you a second chance. So there's a lot of victimless crimes that are at the judgment of the police. They, if they do it right and they have the respect of the community, we will not have as many people in the, um, like I said, in the legal system. Thank you very much. The next question, Rick, you will be the first one to answer uh, this. Again, it's a question that we received several variations of the same question uh, regarding taxes. The following question is compiled from questions that were received from city councilor, or from city council candidates and from voters. New Hampshire is set to experience a rapid increase in its older retiring population within the next decade or so, while simultaneously suffering a decrease of working age adults, which are vital to the city's economic growth and stability. As mayor, how will you handle the inevitable shrinking human capital in our city? Well, uh, as I alluded in the last Sentinel article last week, um, I think payrolls within the city, uh, the top payrolls, I think, are too high. Um, and I'm, I'm still all for, I mentioned the, the one penny business transaction fee. So that w one penny from every business transaction in the city of Keene every day would go into the city coffers. And I haven't done any research, but I'm thinking there's more than 100,000 business transactions that happen in Keene every single day, and that's a great deal of money. Um, it, businesses have to join with the city because their profits come from our citizens. Thank you. Rick, Councillor Roberts. The, um, as for taxes, yes, they're killing us. 14% of the people, we've had a 14% drop of people between 24 and 39, 14% drop of children 15 and below. That's telling us we don't have a much of a future unless we change because people can't come and afford. Is there a way to save money in the city government? Yes. Is there a way to look at taxes differently? Yes. I looked at t taxes differently when I was on the school board finance chair, found one and a half million dollars we saved the this, this school board one half million dollars, but of course I got voted out. But I think now the time people are ready to look at making serious views and map possible cuts in the taxes. Thank you, Councillor. Mayor Lane. <clears throat> Thank you. The, the issue of, of the employment base in this community is absolutely critical. That if we want to maintain our economy, if we want to maintain the quality of life that we have in Keene, we have to maintain the, the employment base that we have. During the last four years, I've gone around meeting with all of the major employers in the city. I've called together the president's court on numerous occasions to, so, so that the top business executives in the community can get together and we can jointly discuss 
actions that the city can take. We have, to, we have invested in this community in a, in a way that is specifically designed to improve the quality of life and make this city a more desirable place for companies who are recruiting families. Thank you, Mayor. Recruiting individuals. The following is a two-part question. Councilor Roberts, you will get the first shot at answering. Uh, the portion, it, it, again, is in regards to the, what was deemed the ever-increasing tax rates. The portion of property taxes collected by the city of Keene has increased 95% in the past 30 years. How can we attract property owners to Keene who don't benefit from the school system, either people without children or people who homeschool, and what will you do to reduce taxes on the residents of Keene? Well, one, we can't attract businesses with this, with this tax rate. When happen, if I want to have a business, like for example, Nanotech, we had trouble finding the rules to get them in there, the high taxes, so they went to Swansea. We've lost a number of businesses to Swansea. We have to look at the tax rate. We're not going to be able to shrink the tax rate we're going to have to slow down the grail and we're going to have to change where we spend our taxes to ensure we get the best bang for the buck. Otherwise, we'll just tax ourselves out into Claremont. Thank you. Mayor Lane. Thank you. It's an interesting question because it's based upon a false premise. The tax rate has not increased by 95% in the last 35 years. And, and in fact, in the last 30 years, the tax rate has dropped. It's, le it's less now than it was in 1985. Uh, the, uh, the tax rate in, for the city portion of the taxes, in fact, has, has increased since 2007, spe directly related to the decrease in state support that we've received. Uh, and a little bit later, I'll go through those specific numbers. But in the long run, if we want to maintain a stable tax rate, if we want to keep the tax rate from, from growing, the way to do it is to expand the tax base, to continue to invest in the community so that we have more taxable property within the community. Thank you, Mayor. Rick. <sighs> Again, is it, unless the state, we can get the state to start giving us back some of the money that they're withholding from us. Uh, you know, that would be a start, and I think we need to start putting pressure on the state uh, for monies. Uh, or, again, I've been told that my one penny business transaction fee wouldn't work because of the state says that we can't do it. And I think if that's the case, then we need to start pushing, maybe we need to start pushing the state for home rule where the city could decide its economic future and not having the state overlord us. Thank you. Uh, the next question will begin with you, Mayor Lane. This was submitted by a city council candidate. According to the common definition of conflict of interest, that is a situation in which a person or organization is involved in multiple interest, financial or otherwise, one of which could possibly corrupt the motivation of the individual or the organization. Is the mayor's appointment of planning board members and city councilors to the Planning, Licenses, and Development Committee a conflict of interest when it comes to the required considerations for variances and zoning changes to allow the sale of the mayor's land for a new retirement development in a rural zone? Uh, the answer is no, because I have nothing to do with, it, with that. I, I signed an agreement to, to sell, sell a piece of property uh, Prospect Place is, is, is pursuing it. I really have no interest in, in it one way or another. The, the, that's, a, you know, I, cer cer certainly, you know, for, for whether, whether he's mayor, whether, whether he's a city councilor, you know, buying and selling of, of real estate does not create a conflict of interest. And since I'm not involved in any way in the, in the project that's, that's being proposed, uh, that uh, I don't... So I don't feel that, that there is any conflict. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Blood, you have 45 seconds to answer the same question. Wow. I don't know. I've never bought or sold land in Keene. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess I have no conflict of interest anywhere. Um, <laughs> I think uh, people on the committees are very important, and the people that go on the committees should be the best qualified 
people for the committees that they're on. And that's a process that I'm not sure exactly how it works, but I don't know all of the specific types of people that would have to be on those committees. And I would rely on, on staff members and people in the know to let me know who would be good on those committees. Thank you. Councillor, you have 45 seconds to answer the same question. Based on the, um, the ethics concern that I was drilled in me for 25 years as a Marine Corps officer, the answer is simple, yes. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Blood, we will begin with you on the next question that was submitted by a city council candidate. Uh, what are your plans, if any, for refreshing the city master plan, which was finished five years ago? I don't think the master plan was finished five years ago. I think the master plan was started, what, eight years ago. And uh, as all documents like that and, and future, uh, future uh, planning, that I believe is a, is a liquid document and, and it will shift and adjust as things in the area change. Thank you. Councillor, you have 45 seconds to answer the same question. Yes, as um, Mr. Blood said, a master plan should be a fluid document. We can't plan 10 years out. It's just saying we would like to be here if things change the way we would like them to change. But for example, if King State College has three to 400 students, King State College is building a new dorm for freshmen, and there's two other private interests, that means the east side and other parts of Keene, like it up in Elm Street, now have vacant property, which will go on sale. So we were not planning on that when we were doing the master plan. That requires a change in the master plan because we don't want that to be a rundown area, which would then be, because if that runs down, the taxes value that goes down and everybody else's taxes go up. Thank you. Uh, we will begin with, I believe, uh, Mayor Lane on the next question, which is a two-part question submitted by a city council candidate. When you first took office, the parking fund had approximately $850,000. Taxpayers are now being told that the fund will be bankrupt in approximately two years. Where did the money go? And if the city cannot break even on parking, should the city shut down enforcement, sell the lots, and make remaining parking free to welcome shoppers and business investment? Well, first off, as far as where the money went, the money went to, to reinvestment and maintenance of, of the uh, parking. That there was a great deal of deferred maintenance, deferred maintenance on on the Well Street parking lot, deferred maintenance on the Commercial Street parking lot, and the 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 funds in in the uh, parking fund have gone to uh, renovate the, those uh, facilities. Uh, the the answer to 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 your basic question as to whether we should shut down parking, absolutely not. The 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 structure, you know. Various communities decide to pay for parking in various ways. We, we could certainly allow the, the uh, taxpayers in general to pick up the cost of parking and which the tax rate would go up substantially. Thank you, Mayor. Or we can use it as a user fee, which your, your, is what we've done. Your time's up. Uh, Mr. Blood? <clears throat> I don't know where the money went. <laughs> I wasn't around uh, to see that. Uh, as far as the general future of the parking, yeah, uh, my vote would be to, I know this is going to make a lot of people mad, uh, double the rates. Double the rates, double the tickets, and for all those people that say if we raise the parking rates, people won't go downtown, that's fallacy. People will still go downtown. I still go to Hampton Beach uh, at $2 an hour over there. Um, people will still come, raise the rates, take care of what we need to take care of. Thank you. Councillor Roberts. <clears throat> yes. For one thing, this is a problem with our budgeting and how we explain it to people. The money went nowhere because the money wasn't there. We were planning on looking at through Gibo Avenue. There was a whole bunch of stuff. Then 600000 was put in there for design and long-range planning. But then when the Gibo Avenue went out of the way, that was taken out. So because we had no um, need to put a parking structure there, so we didn't spend the money for the design. That's how the things in the budget switches around and we don't explain very well. With the parking fund is, I don't know if we're gonna, what we're gonna do in the future. 
And so until we know what we do in the future, that's a question. But yes, we have to keep feed parking. Thank you, Councillor. The following question was submitted by a City Council candidate. They say, given the cable monopoly for many people in town, how would you feel about the city providing free Wi-Fi? Do you believe this would attract businesses, jobs, and young people? Mr. Blood. Hmm. You know, I'm not really up on the whole Wi-Fi technology thing. Um, because I don't know what is involved and what the cost to the city. Again, yes, it would be nice to think that the city could provide Wi-Fi all over the city, uh, but at what cost? Again, every, every <coughs> added thing that the city does means more cost, more taxes, which you have to take into consideration when, when you're planning that every extra little thing that you do, I mean, again, leaf pickup is a great one. They've tried, they've tried to take that away. People didn't want to let that go. That costs money. Everything that the city does for the citizen is money. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Roberts. <clears throat> yes, I would, if it was feasible and we could find the money, I would put free Wi-Fi around the city because right now we have a lot of families who can't afford Wi-Fi. They go to the Y for the kids to do their homework. We're talking about keeping children and families and keen. So why should the people get a kid be, with, which your parents have Wi-Fi where poor or hard-working or working poor parents who can't afford? Wi-Fi is good for everyone. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Lane, you have 45 seconds to answer the, the question. The, the expansion of high-speed internet service throughout the community is incredibly important, and in the long run, we're going to have to do it. The estimated cost right now of expanding the, the high-speed internet service is about $3.5 million. We don't have $3.5 million sitting in our pockets, and the state has prohibited us from, from selling bonds to, to raise that money. So the, the, the city, in fact, right now is looking for a mechanism in which that can be paid for to raise the $3.5 million so that we can expand high-speed internet throughout the city. <coughs> we have a concept called Gigabyte Keen, which has been working on this now for, for about two years. Thank you. Uh, the next question, we will begin with Councilor Roberts. This also submitted by a city council candidate. What is your view on the flooding problem in the city of Keene? <clears throat> the flooding problem on the city of Keene, yes, there's um, some climate change. We've had a number of um, storms, 100 year storms over the last couple of years. My house was flooded in 2005. We have to come up with a better plan. We have to come up with better storms, drains. But again, that's going to cost money. Otherwise, we're going to constantly have more floods. They fix my street. I'm not having floods, but people farther down, like Ralston Street and everything, are having floods. So we just can't keep backing it up to the city. Mayor Lane? The, we clearly have, have a serious flooding problem in Keene that, that, we, that climate change is, is, regardless of what causes climate change, climate change is, in fact, upon us and it is causing more frequent storms and more severe storms and more frequent flooding and more severe <coughs> flooding. Uh, Council Roberts mentioned Ralston Street. Ralston Street is a prime example of an area that is flooded every time we have a heavy thunderstorm. We have an, the, the storm, storm water system in Keene is old. It, it is inadequate. Uh, the, the funds necessary to upgrade it are not readily available. We are, I, we have, I've been meeting with the congressional delegation to, to determine whether we can get any federal assistance to do this. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Uh, the next question, Mr. Blood, you will be the first one to answer. This was submitted by a city council candidate. What will you do about government serving itself and insiders first? Do you view this as a problem? I do, um, which is why I think that the the, the top salaries in Keene should be should be trimmed a little bit um, because to me it seems like if you want people in, I, I personally I want people in the government of Keene the people on the staff of the city of Keene I want them to be in their positions because they care about Keene 
I don't want them to be in it for the money. I don't want them to be in it for the benefits. I want actual people that care about the city of Keene in these jobs and not just for the money and benefits. Yeah, it's, it's great to get a city job because it's money and it's benefits. Thank you, Mr. Blood. Councilor Roberts. <clears throat> yes, I, I agree with Councilor Blood, but I also say there's a lot of people. Councilor Mr. Blood. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> you gave him a promotion. Okay. A lot of people who work for the city of Keene don't make very much money. Yes, some people at the top make a lot of money. But the thing that we need to do is we need to have a clear and open dialogue between the people of Keene and the leadership of Keene. Because right now, the people of Keene believe that the leadership doesn't care about them. And somehow, the, lead the leadership of Keene has to get out in the streets, walk among the people, listen to the people. The people of Keene want to be listened to. Thank you. Mayor, you have 45 seconds to answer the same question. <coughs> My experience with the city employees, are they incredibly devoted to their jobs and they're incredibly devoted to the city. I think a prime example of that is that when we went through the last recession, the unions stepped forward, which represent all of the city employees, and agreed to defer any pay raises while the city was struggling to, to pay its bills and going through the recession. They were struggling as individuals, but they still stepped forward and said, nope, we're going to help the city. We're going to defer any. We're, we're going to, in fact, forgive any any pay raises that we're otherwise entitled to. So my experience with the city employees is that they are incredibly devoted to this community and 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 offer a great deal to it. Uh, the, Thank the, you, Mayor. Uh, Councilor Roberts, you will get a shot at the next question first. This was submitted by a city council candidate. Do you think that marijuana should be treated like alcohol? Is this something that you can ask the local police to do? And do you believe that the public should have access to marijuana, which is a known painkiller, given the opiate problems caused by the medical community? I'll give you 60 seconds to answer this question. I have to put my state hat out, house hat on. One, yes, I believe in medical marijuana. I voted for it. We're finally going to get it. We get the new governor who supports it. Two, I believe in decriminalizing marijuana. People should not be put in the legal system if they get caught. I do not agree right now at legalizing marijuana. And the biggest problem, we always talk about heroin, but it's an opium. A lot of people are taking like Oxycontin and other ones, which is heroin-like, that's causing the heroin addiction. Now the heroin is cheaper to get than it is to get the pills. So if medical marijuana can solve the pain, that's one of the ways we can prevent people becoming opium addicts. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, you have 60 <coughs> seconds to answer the same question. I, 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 actually, I get longer time on this one. I, I actually agree with, with, with Councilor Roberts that, that, that I supported medical marijuana and continue to support the use of medical marijuana. But my biggest concern is that we, we have addicts in this community we have addicts that need to be treated. We have addicts that need assistance in their, in their recovery. That if, if marijuana is legalized, it sends the wrong message. It sends the message that there are drugs that, that are, in fact, okay to use, there are, that there are drugs that, that, that are legal to use. Drugs are not legal to use, and, and that we need to send the message that we will not tolerate. I, I, do not tolerate smoking. I do not to tolerate uh, the legalization of, of marijuana. I think I think it's a bad mistake, and I think it sends the wrong message. Thank you, Mr. Blood. You have 60 seconds to answer the question. That's funny because I think the message has already been sent. We've got liquor stores on our highways, for God's sakes. Um, yeah, uh, marijuana should be looked at as. Another leafy substance that gets smoked, plain and simple. Uh, we have a heroin problem. Let's, you know, don't waste our time on marijuana people. Waste it on heroin dealers, you know. And, I, and again, I believe in harsh penalties for, for anybody that deals heroin. And I'm thinking life in prison and stuff. Uh, because they're dealing poison. And they know that they're dealing poison. Uh, marijuana, it's another, it could be another... Rev tax revenue, another income. Thank you. Uh, we'll go back to 45 second answers on the next couple of questions. 
Uh, Mayor Lane, we'll begin with you. This was submitted by a city council candidate. The question reads, the city hired Don McCormick to help the city apply for an EPA grant to support the aquaponics facility at the Keene Transfer Station. Mr. McCormick additionally helped the city write the RFP for proposals to operate the aquaponic facility, was the only person to apply for the grant and was awarded the grant. Many consider this self-dealing, which is a conflict of interest. Are you troubled by the self-dealing corruption in city government at the local level? First off, I don't believe that there's self-dealing corruption in city government, and I think the, the use of the term corruption by a city council candidate or anyone else is, is a mis, mis, misconstruing the, the role of city government. Secondly, I, I, I support the Keat project, the Keen, the Keen uh, agricultural project at, at, the, uh, at the landfill that, uh, in fact, it's really creating a model that will be followed nationwide that uh, in January I had the opportunity to go to Washington to, to speak and I wasn't speaking about that project but I got a lot of questions about that project because that project is being followed by communities across the country who have landfills and, and are looking for ways to uh, uh, utilize the methane gas that's, Thank that's you, produced from a landfill. Mr. Blood? I'm all for that, that uh, operation up there. I think it, it will bring a few jobs to the area, it'll bring some income to the area, um, it'll bring something new to the area. I've, I've already mentioned a few times a uh, uh, tilapia and lettuce festival uh, to replace <laughs> the pumpkin festival, you know? Um, but we've got to get that up and running first, you know? Because uh, you can't have a tilapia festival with no tilapia. Uh, but yeah, anything that we can do in, uh, to further uh, economic development, and I believe that's going to that's gonna help Keen. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Roberts? I like the idea. I voted for the idea because of um, sustainability, basically the co reduce the carbon footprint, give fresh food and vegetables to uh, students at the local schools. But I'm really having a, a concern about the individual that's running it. I just got done reading about they're not going to be able to do it this year. They're going to have to postpone it. And when you go back and look at this track record in Vermont, you know, if he can't get it done next, like he said, he's going to get it done next year, I think we really have to seriously look at getting someone else to do it or pull the plug on the project. Thank you. We just had a question come across on Twitter. And Rick, we will begin with you on this. Or wait, you started the last one, I, I think. <laughs> I did. Uh, so okay. uh, <clears throat> Councilor Roberts will begin with you. Uh, Google Fiber will come to any city that welcomes them, which would bring super fast internet. Will you reach out to Google? Yes. Mayor Lane? Yes. Mr. Blood? Yeah, why not? Um, <laughs> if anybody's offering their city of Keene anything free, by all means, yes. <laughs> uh, we will go back to 45 seconds for answers on this next question. On October 6th, there will be an election to remove one of you three gentlemen from the mayoral race and to remove six candidates from the at-large city council race. This will cost the taxpayers an approximate $5,000. If elected, would you work with the city council to either eliminate the need for a primary or to change the requirements that trigger the need for a primary? And we will begin with uh, Mayor Lane. Uh, we, we actually modified the uh, city charter. We, we took a, an amendment to the city <coughs> charter to the voters to, two years ago to modify the requirements relating to a, uh, a primary that uh, we, we provided that if a, if, unless there were a large number of candidates that a primary would not be held. This year, interestingly enough, we have more candidates than we've ever had in, in, since, since we started the uh, current election system back, back in the late 1940s. And so we, we are having the primary to narrow those candidates down. I think this is an unusual situation. I don't expect it to, to reoccur. And, and so I don't expect it in the future. We will, we will have elections that will necessarily require a primary. I think the current sy system works. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Blood. I've always felt it put uh, all the names on the general ballot. 
Here are your candidates. Vote for one of them. Councilor Roberts. I believe in, in the primary system. The election is a fundamental right of all the citizens. And I hope, beyond hope, that this what's happened this year is not unusual. I hope this happens every two years so the people at Keene can get the, who they want. Because when we say, basically, the last couple of elections, no one's in. People only have one choice. Sorry, Rick. No, that's, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. <laughs> the next is uh, unusual. Uh, someone submitted a question for each of you individually. And you will each only answer the question that's submitted directly for you. And these were submitted by a city council candidate. Uh, each one of you were on the ballot in 2011. Only two of you answered the Keene Sentinel questionnaire. For you, <coughs> Mr. Blood, will you answer the Sentinel questionnaire this year? And can you give us a preview of why you are running for mayor and your vision for the city of Keene in the next 10 years? I would like to see the city almost stay the same in the next 10 years. Um, Due to the fact that we just we have to work on what we've got, um, stop spending excess money, expanding, stop putting in new streets because for every new street you've got new sewer lines, more asphalt, and that's more money. Again, I want to get the budget under control and maybe have a surplus every year in the Keene City budget. That would be nice. Um, and yes, I'll, I'll probably answer the the Sentinels questionnaire this year. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mayor Lane, if you are, or rather this says you were elected in 2011 and stated that you were running for mayor in part to improve employment opportunities, adequate housing and taxes, and that your vision for the next 10 years was to make Keene the most livable city in America. Overall, how would you grade your own performance so far on these matters? And if elected, what actions will you take to improve those matters? In 2008, the city of Keene adopted a community vision. The community vision basically is to make Keene the best city in America in 20 years. We're on track to do that. I want, that, I want to achieve that. I think, I think that, that the view, the goal that we have for the, for the next uh, 20 years will in fact achieve that. During the last four years, I've, I've worked extensively to improve the employment base. I've, I've met with the local employees. I've called together the President's Court. We've developed mechanisms to, to invest in the city, to improve the quality of life in the city. So, so that I think that, that uh, we are moving forward on, on that front. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Councillor Roberts, in the same Sentinel questionnaire from 2011 as a councillor, you also addressed adequate workforce, housing, and attracting businesses to stabilize the tax base. What grade would you give yourself as a councillor and to Mayor Lane in addressing these challenges? And if elected, what would you do differently to turn the city around? <clears throat> First one, I would not give Mayor Lane any grade. That's up to the voters. Second, um, workforce housing. I am upset about the workforce housing. We were supposed to have workforce housing on um, Water Street, but the prices were so high, then it, be, it no longer became workforce housing. It's called workforce housing, but it isn't. So I'm disappointed on that. Second is we have to have workforce housing. Maybe we get with medical, we get with someone else and look at the part of maybe tearing down some of the old houses in East Keene and create workforce housing. When I was a lieutenant in 1981, had to go to Okinawa, I bought into workforce housing, which was on Court Street for 37.9. We need more of that in Keene. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, we will begin the next question <laughs> with you, Mayor Lane. 45 seconds to answer the question, what differentiates you from the other candidates? Uh, the, what differentiates me from the other candidates, first off, is, is my commitment to the city, my long-term experience in the city. What I bring to the table is, is 30 years of work in, in the public sector, both, both in nonprofits as well, as well as in the city of Keene. 
that I, I, bring, the, I bring that to the city. I, I love the city. I care a great deal about this city. And I, and I want only, only the best for its future. I want to see it prosper. I want to see it successful. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Blood, you have 45 seconds to answer the question. What differentiates you from your two opponents? Well, I'm, uh, I think my sense of humor. Um, <laughs> I think I'm better looking, uh, personally. Um, I grew up in this town. I'm a uh, uh, son of a son of a poor man. Um, and still a poor man, um, and I, I feel that I'm I'm the regular, the regular guy, of, amongst the giants. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> Thank you, uh, Councillor Roberts. I don't think anybody would question my commitment to the city, being on the school board, the city council, and the state house. I want to see what's future for the King, better better future for the King. I've graduated from King State College twice. Half of my family is from Keene, born in Keene, and I want to see where Keene is going to be two, five, and ten years from now. I want to work, I'm going to work with the people of Keene. I'm going to make sure Keene State College is part of the Keene, not separate from Keene. Thank you. Uh, the following questions, please provide a one sentence answer for the following questions, and we'll begin with you, Mr. Blood. Uh, these all came from a city council candidate, by the way. The average compensation package for Keene government employees, including cost of benefits, is approximately $95,000. Uh, this, again, is the figure provided by the person asking the question. Do you feel that this is too high, too little, or about right? Uh, I would cut that by 5%. Counselor. I don't think those numbers are correct. And maybe. Uh, assuming they are, do you think it's too high, about right, or too low? It would depend on the position. Mayor Lane, I also don't think those numbers are correct. I've seen I've seen the correct numbers, and 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 they are different than than the number that's being cited. Uh, as far as far as how, what, whether the numbers that whether the amounts that city employees are actually getting. I think we have a compression issue. I, th I think that, that we have some employees that, that perhaps should be making more than, than, than they're currently making. But I, th I think that, that the average compensation within the city is about right. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Roberts, we'll begin with you on the next question. And again, remember one sentence answers, please. Should government employees receive free central city parking when normal workers have to pay? Yes. Because we've had pop, yes. Mayor Lane? Yes. Mr. Blood? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, sure. Uh, and Rick, we will begin with you on the next question. Should keen taxpayers have to fund a $91,000 pension plus post retirement health care <coughs> benefits after someone serves only 25 years of government service? That's, that's another thing that, that I, I find tough to take is people that retire after 20 years and then draw their pension for 60 years. It's, it's another cost-wasting uh, mechanism that it started back when people died five or 10 years after they retired. Thank you, Rick. Uh, Counselor. Well, first, I'd have a, a conflict of interest because I served my 21 years in the Marine Corps and I uh, got a, a pension. Second is, that's the, yes, the city of Keene contributed, yes, the individual contributed, and at, at the other time, the state used to contribute. We, yes, we have changed the law to ensure that doesn't happen as it used to in the past, so. Thank you. Mayor Lane? Uh, the, the, uh, the individual who, who gets that kind of pension worked for 25 years as a public employee to earn that. That was a part of his employment. He has a vested right to that. I'm not gonna take that vested right away. Thank you. Uh, the following, and this is going to be the last question before we go into closing statements. What are your hobbies? And we'll begin with you, Councillor Roberts. <clears throat> My hobbies are reading, traveling, and photography. Mayor Lane? Uh, re reading and gardening. And you, Mr. Blood? 
Uh, I like making video, making, uh, taking pictures, and traveling. And we will now give each candidate 90 seconds for a closing <coughs> statement. Tell everyone watching this why they should vote for you on October 6th, and if you make it through the primary, why they should vote for you in November. Uh, Mayor Lane, we will begin with you. Thank you. I love this city. I care a great deal about this city. I've worked hard on behalf of this city for, for a lot of years. I would hope that the voters would recognize the contributions that have been made to the city over, over the past 30 years to make this a better city, to make this a city that is a, a wonderful place to, to live, to work, to raise a family, to shop, to go to school. And the, I want to continue those strengths. I want, I want to see those strengths go into the future. I will continue to work hard to, to achieve that. And, and I would ask that the, that the voters consider voting for me both in the primary and on November 6th. Thank you. Uh, Mr. I might vote for him. <laughs> Mr. Blum, uh, you have 90 seconds to answer the, or rather to give your closing statement and tell everybody why they should vote for you. Well, you should vote for me because, again, I'm the regular guy. Um, for the citizens, I would, I would like to get more transparency. Again, more transparency is what I talked about in 2011. That's what I'll talk about here. Um, the city actually using the, the media to its advantage that it has a, a huge opportunity to do at this point. Um, and to educate the, the community about what goes on in the city and in, in each specific department. Um, that's one of the things that I'd work on. If, if you feel like change one way or another, vote for me. Thank you. And Councilor Roberts, you have 90 seconds for a closing statement. The, um, I think what separates me different from the other two candidates, I've looked, being on a school board, being on a city, being on the county, and being on the, um, up at the state house, I see how every one of those organizations want to do what's best, of what they think is the best for the city, but sometimes they're competing against each other. I think because I've served on all four, I'll, I'll be able to help and look so they can get together on the same page, but I would also involve more and more people from the city of Keene because Keene has been doing good, but Keene hasn't grown in the last 40 years. Keene has been doing good, but not everybody has been doing good. I want to make sure Keene, when we say Keene is good, it's happening for all the citizens of Keene. Thank you. And we still have about four minutes left. And there was a question that just came through uh, from someone watching at home who called in. We will give each of the candidates 45 seconds to answer this question. Uh, the caller and viewer at home wants to hear your opinion on the Maplewood housing situation. Uh, 45 seconds. Begin with you, Rick. I think we need a county nursing home, for one thing. <clears throat> Like the mayor said earlier, our, our population is getting more and more aged as time goes on. Um, and a lot of these people have nothing else. Um, I'm, I'm for some sort of a community nursing home. I would like to see it closer to Keene, um, personally, but I'm for the nursing home. Thank you. Councilor Roberts? I agree that we need a new nursing home. I think we should have a, stand, a new standalone facility right up at Westmoreland because um, it will save the taxpayers about 10 to 15 uh, million dollars. We don't want to rehab the old building, too expensive little um, gain, but we don't want um, Cheshire County Correctional Facility tobacco that costs so much more than it needs to be. Thank you. And Mayor Lane. We have an incredible opportunity right now. We, the, the estimated cost of renovating the existing building is around $20 million. We actually, for that same cost, we can build a new 21st century facility in Keene, ne near, near the, uh, near, near the uh, correctional facility on land already owned by, or, or for which the county had an option on it. Uh, we, if, we, if we don't mess it up, that, that we really have a tremendous opportunity to build a new facility that meets all the current standards 
in Keene, you know, at at a at a cost that is affordable by by the taxpayers. Thank you, and I would like to thank all three of you for showing up to the debate. And for everyone watching at home, I want to thank you for watching. And if you live in Keene, I want to remind you that the primary election is October 6th. Polls, I believe, open at 8 a.m. and close at 7 p.m. There are five precincts throughout the city, so if you aren't sure what ward you're in, you can stop by the city clerk's office, pick up a sample ballot, and they can tell you your voting location. So thank you very much for coming out, and thank you at home for watching.